Hey, what's up guys, Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to maximize speed by using the high-low CNS training method. So if you just watched my last video, I just posted a full four-week strength and conditioning program for an American football player, and in that video, I actually broke down the training days into high and low CNS days, and I got a lot of questions about this. And this is a method that I've learned from Buddy Morris, Charlie Francis, and a lot of the folks over in Westside Barbell. If you didn't know, I spent about eight years in Columbus, Ohio, so I indirectly learned a lot from those guys. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the details of high and low CNS training, how we actually write a strength conditioning program based on that, the science. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so to start off, let's talk about what does it actually mean to stress or adapt the CNS, the central nervous system. I think this term is thrown around a lot and there's a lot of bro science around it, the central nervous system fatigue. Uh, so let's actually talk about what that really means. So to start off, the nervous system is what connects our brain to our muscles. So we have different nerves that run at high and low speeds that connect our brain to our muscles. So if I want to contract my bicep, I can think about it and contract the bicep. Now importantly, this brain to muscle connection is very adaptable. We can improve the motor unit firing rate and how fast we can send signals or action potentials from the brain to the muscles. We can also improve the muscular synchronization of how well our muscles work together when they're getting signals. So this is what we mean by CNS adaptation and CNS stress is how we're actually adapting that central nervous system. And then in practical terms, this is often just called power training. And really that's somewhat synonymous. High CNS training is typically associated with high power training. So things that are fast and powerful and explosive. All right, so now that we have a basis for what CNS training is, let's talk about the bookends here and how we could go wrong with this. So on one end, we have our bro who's going to the gym and every single Monday and Thursday, for example, is doing a one rep max bench. And he's really trying to hit 225, so he's going and benching 215, and then 220, and then failing at 220. And he's really just staying the same week after week, not speaking from experience. Now this bro will probably eventually figure out that once he's hit a max, a one rep max, in a training session, you may be okay hitting another one rep max for the next training session, but eventually you're gonna cause fatigue and you're not gonna keep progressing your one rep max. And generally he kind of figures out, okay, well I'm gonna go into a higher volume phase or I'm gonna go into a different phase of training where I'm not continually stressing the one rep max. So where the bro went wrong here was stressing the same neural pathway for the same movement pattern over and over and over again. And that could cause what we call CNS fatigue. So this would be an overstimulation of the CNS. On the other side of the bookend here, we might have someone who's just constantly varying what they're doing. So they're doing something different every workout, and in that way, they're not really stressing the same pathway enough to maximally adapt a certain pathway. And that might be an okay training method if you're trying to improve a lot of different skills, if you're training for parkour or CrossFit, where you need a bunch of different skills and you don't need to maximize something but that's kind of the other extreme. And knowing those two extremes, we wanna talk about now the training methods that kind of dial in and optimize in the middle of those. So one method to dial in and optimize between too much and too little central nervous system fatigue is by varying high and low CNS days, meaning that on one day, we're really focusing on high CNS stress activities. So what are those high CNS stress activities? These are generally activities that have high explosive intent. We're typically doing these under a proper warm up, so that's a really big factor for the performance on these high CNS days. These are often longer warm ups, very technical, and then we're really maximizing a few repetitions of speed or strength work. Especially for a speed athlete, we wanna be really well recovered for these days so that each of our attempts are greater than 90% and ideally greater than 95% of our true maximal speed. So if you can run, a PR of a 10 and a half second 100 meter, we want our training days and our training speeds to be really close to that on our high CNS days. And that is generally gonna be more effective than doing moderately fatigued days where we're running 11 and a half, 12 second 100 meters, and we're not really training the quality of maximal speed under those conditions. If we're a strength athlete or if we're in a strength phase of training as a speed athlete, we're gonna be typically doing two rep max to five rep max type training on these days. So this is really heavy lifts. We're talking about 80%, 85%, 90% of one rep max. And also we could be incorporating plyometrics like bounding and power skips, accelerations up a hill and training like that. And importantly, we're not doing a high volume of sprint training, we're doing high intensity sprint training. So depending on your skill level, this might be 400 to 800 meters of total sprint training for a, for example, 100 to 200 meter sprint athlete. 
So they may be doing 60 meter sprints five, six times, for example, but with really high intensity each attempt and adequate recovery between attempts. All right, so if that's the type of training that we're doing on our high CNS days, which may be one, two times a week, what are we gonna do on our low CNS days? Now, these are not easy days. Easy training days is not synonymous with low CNS days. It's just a different stimulus. These days are intended to work on things like aerobic conditioning, anaerobic conditioning, hypertrophy, balance, stability, all of these traits can provide an adequately challenging workout, but also allow the CNS system to recover so that way whenever you get to your high CNS day, you can put out maximal effort. For many athletes like soccer, football, hockey, baseball, they're gonna have to perform repeated accelerations. To actually do that in a game with good performance, you need the quality of maximal velocity, so we need days that we're actually training that maximal acceleration, maximal velocity, but we also need the conditioning associated with repeated sprint performance. So on our low CNS days, we're often accumulating that ability to repeat our sprint bouts, and then on our high CNS days, we're actually training the quality of maximizing speed, maximizing acceleration, maximizing rate of force development. And that combination is going to lead to better results than doing a bunch of moderate intensity, high volume days. There are a couple of unique training methods to think about here, and I think Westside Barbell is a pretty good example of a unique training method. They want to specifically train, for example, the quality of maximal strength and maximal force output. A lot of these guys are really just focused on hitting PRs on a bunch of different lifts. But that said, they're not gonna do one rep max squatting every day. They're gonna do slight variations of one rep max squatting, whether that be box squats, accommodating resistance squats, uh, front squats, and doing that will actually train different neural pathways for the same or relatively similar movement patterns. So that's actually a way with slight exercise variation, but really good consistency and intensity and volume to train the neural pathways and maximize the quality of maximal force without fatiguing the same neural pathway. So that's one unique method. Uh, another unique scenario is someone who's learning a new movement pattern. Uh, and one example that comes to mind for that is a hurdler. So someone who's learning to do the hurdles may actually benefit from greater frequency of training. So their training actually may look a little bit different than a sprinter. For the example of the hurdler, they may actually do more technique work at low to moderate intensity, and that may be more beneficial during the learning phase because we know that repetition is really important for learning a new skill. So hopefully this video has helped to clarify some misinformation about CNS training and giving you some methods to employ. If this video is helpful, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and go ahead and follow me on Instagram at The Movement System to see similar videos on speed strength, strength speed, maximal speed, and other strength conditioning concepts. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.